Hi, I'm Jenny. Thanks for stopping by the Unconventional Homestead. Tonight, we're making soup for a crowd. Pasta fagioli. It's favorite. Definitely hands down. I make it several times a year for the peeps and they love it. It makes a huge batch and we're doing one thing different, which is we're taking tomatoes that Anthony washed before the end of the harvest. It was the last ones that we had. We froze them and now I thawed them today. I'm gonna go through them, take the um, core out and we're going to kind of do like a stewed tomato. It calls for diced tomatoes. This is what we have. We're cleaning out our freezers. So that's, and I think it'll be wonderful. So it's a little bit more hands-on than I usually do, but I also have to start beans. It has kidney and cannelloni beans. We're using Great Northern. Um, it's a cup and a half of dry of each. That's one pound. So we're able to do it in the Instapot with two pounds in one batch. So that's awesome. So come along for that and then we'll get started on everything else. So I have the um, Instapot on a saute function. I put about two tablespoons of bacon grease in there. I always save my bacon grease. I've gone through the beans rinsed them, went through, picked out, you know, there were, oh, I'm going to take these out too. Um, and as they go in, if I see any others, it's just, you know, they're, they're not the best. So why, why put them in our soup? So I rinsed them and went through them already. And then I have some homemade beef broth. We're gonna be going through a lot of beef broth today. Um, probably over 10 quarts, cause I have, I think there's eight quarts in the soup. Yeah, so this is 11 already. And I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Um, I also save my lids not to recan with, but to use for vacuum sealing. And I love this, it's my jar opener key. I'll put it in the description below. Now this one I won't keep because I do see a little bit of rusting or it's the paint has scraped off of it. So I do throw that away. I don't think this whole thing will fit in, but because whatever it is left liquid-wise in here, I will add to the soup. I'm gonna lower this just a tad. So there is, I'm gonna make sure that it's on closed, not venting. And then there is a bean and it's exactly 30 minutes, that's what I'm gonna leave it on. It will take a while to get up to pressure. I will let it cook for the full 30 minutes. I will let it natural release, which means I just leave this on closed for at least a half an hour. And then we will get those out. And hopefully by that time, I'll be done with the tomatoes and we'll start adding stuff together. And I'll bring you back. I thought I might as well share with you. So some of them are still frozen. So this is frost. They're gonna cook up just fine, but I'm going through, I'm taking out the core and then I'm throwing them in here. And if there's any bad parts, anything that looks like, whoa, maybe it got freezer burn or something. Um, I'm supposed to have, I think five quarts of tomatoes. So I brought up my 14 quart roaster because tomatoes will get juicy and lose a lot and um so i just want to make sure we have enough it'll just add to the flavor and we have all kinds of tomatoes in here we have roma tomatoes we got little green ones which will be fine um got to be careful that they don't squirt too much um, so, but there are some that are still, 
This one feels really frozen, but boy, that was easy to get the core out. So I guess it'll work. I'll put some heat on it and it's gonna be fine. Um, so it's always good to use every part of your harvest. This I think makes Anthony and I very happy because it was our harvest and we didn't waste it. We're using it and we're using it for something really good, which is to feed people. So we will bring you back as we continue, but I hope that you'll think about making this. It's, it's a wonderful soup. Tomatoes are all done. It really didn't take that long. It was an easy way to process them. I have them in a separate pot because I want I don't want it to become tomato sauce. I want to still have chunks. So I wanted a little bit of control. I have my really large stock pot, but these are the onions that I use. I will link them below. They're chopped onions. One fourth of a cup equals one onion. And I need one and a half cups, equivalent of six onions. So what I have in this pot here, and I'm just gonna kind of guesstimate, um, cause it's okay if I get a little bit extra, um, is I put about a fourth of a cup of bacon grease. Again, saving your bacon grease is just a, it's a free oil for you to be able to use, but it has tremendous flavor. I also have three pints of celery that I had canned. And I think, I know I've mentioned this in several other videos, that I won't be canning celery. I'll be freeze drying them. Um, so I'm trying to get rid of it. I only have like three pints left. That's really not going to be that much. And what I have in my freezer, I will be using, our church is having a soup fundraiser the first weekend in February. And I am helping them with that. And I will take most of the celery that I have cut up in my freezer. So the next sale that we have I will be getting more to freeze dry it. I do have some freeze dried, so that will be what I use once we get all this other um, used up. A lot of people, once they have a pantry, don't want to use it. They don't want to use their canned goods. They work so hard or they, they don't, but you need to use it. That's what it's there for. You don't want it to go bad. In fact, I've had people who shall remain nameless give me jars of food that are 15 to 30 years old. I did open one because it was water bath, okay? So that's, that's, I would not open a pressure can, but I opened a water bath and mm -mm, it was not right. I could tell right away, even Anthony could tell. So no, use your food, rotate it, make sure you're going through it. So anyway, enough lecturing for now. Let's get back to our soup. Um, this is a really easy one. You just kind of dump everything together. So I'm going to go get some more jars open and I'll bring you back. Um, one thing is, and I've told you this before, is I like to get as much done ahead of time as I can. I am making the beans tonight. I really wish I would have made them earlier in the week, but it just didn't happen. But I did brown the six pounds of ground beef. So I have that and it'll be going in in a little bit. But let me get the jars of beef broth and spaghetti sauce, get everything open and we'll come back. So I have a quart of beef broth here and I wanna listen to the sound it makes. So I can tell that that was completely sealed. Then I'm gonna move you over to see me at it. Okay. So I will bring you back once I get them all open. I believe I've showed you and I will pull that video and uh, flag it for you, how I make my spaghetti sauce. So this is homemade spaghetti sauce going in there. And then beef broth I pour in to make sure we get everything or as much as we can 
out of the spaghetti sauce jars. always have a spatula because like I needed a little bit of help getting some of the uh, celery out and that type of thing. is a lot of the spices for this soup are already in the spaghetti sauce. I use quite a bit of spaghetti sauce throughout the year. Um, we are almost there. My mom, I always refer to it uh, to my mom as the ever growing soup. Because of the pasta and the beans, it just soaks up a lot of liquid. And um, so I do usually have to add quite a bit uh, more beef broth to it. And I'm fine with that. I want it to be a nice texture. Um, so I'm just using my show you this in the pot behind here my my hamburger chopper I'm using it for these tomatoes so I'm just getting them warm and kind of smashing them um, and it'll be more this time like a stewed tomato instead of a diced tomato but I tell you what they smell just like they were picked this morning um, it's amazing so I just want to make sure I don't have any big chunks and then I will pour it in too. So let me make sure that I'm getting them all chopped up and I'll bring you back. So far, I've emptied 18 quarts and three pints for the soup. The tomatoes are ready to go in. You just always want to make sure you pour very slowly and keep your face back. But I don't think there's any, I haven't found any way to not have a little bit of splash in. Empty, so that's good. That worked really well for quality control. And I will get a paper towel to wipe off, first off, around here, but it went up on my microwave and, oh, it's starting to smell really good. Now I did have a few tomatoes, but I'll be able to see them here and just smash them. But I want to, you want to get all the way down to the bottom. Make sure you don't get anything sticking on there to get too hot. Yep, those, oh, that spaghetti sauce, those spices smell amazing. We need smell-o-vision so you guys can smell this. Okay. Now, the other thing I'm going to do... So I'm gonna take my really good pair of kitchen scissors. They're always clean in the drawer. Well, they're not always in the drawer because I looked for them the other day on a video. Um, but I'm gonna cut these. 
these are floating to the top. And so I can help get them a little bit smaller. Again, contain the mess. I have a spoon rest over here. So tomorrow we have 20 people we're feeding. My mom made some seasoned oyster crackers and she made chocolate cake. Sometimes simple is really delicious. And so every once in a while, she'll just make chocolate. She makes some bunt cakes. I don't know, something about a bunt cake just really makes it taste amazing. These spices, it just smells like spaghetti soup, kind of. Okay, so I will link my inspiration recipe. It's from Taste of Home in the directions, but I'm gonna just check one more time. So I do have kidney beans and the great northern beans that we're waiting on. They're down to one minute, and then we just have to natural release them. And I have carrots to add, canned carrots. I will drain them, definitely drain them. And then we do need to add oregano and pepper and parsley. So I'm gonna get those and we'll be right back. So five tablespoons of parsley. So a fourth of a cup and one tablespoon. One tablespoon of oregano. And half a tablespoon of pepper. And I was just checking to make sure I, there is no salt added. So let me get those carrots drained and we're gonna add those. We have the carrots drained. This is three cans of carrots. You definitely can use fresh. I've just found it cuts cooking time because you don't have to wait for them to be soft and cook down. Um, the beans still probably have about 20 minutes left to natural release. Here's the six pounds of ground beef. And the one thing I have learned with the pasta is you don't want the soup to be boiling. So I will get it really warm now, put the beans in, and then I'll bring it down. And I'll probably let it sit off of the heat for a little while before I add the pasta. Because I, the pasta, I'd rather it not be quite boiling because I don't want it to overcook. I could get a different pot out and do that, but I already had a pot out for the uh, tomatoes, so we don't want too many more dishes. This is smelling wonderful. Again, just periodically stirring it up so that it doesn't get stuck on the bottom. And you're just letting it heat up so that it all melts together. That's the secret of good soup that and a little good oil and we already put that in that was the baking grease so make sure you're saving that so i let the uh beans uh natural release for 30 minutes they're ready 
all of the extra beef broth that they cooked in, I am going to put in the soup. I'm, they're not overcooked by any means. You don't, I don't want them to turn to mush, um, but they're definitely cooked. So this is, they look really good. They smell very good. So let's get them over into the soup. I've stirred the soup a few times to make sure it's not sticking on the bottom. It's doing really well. It's warm, um, definitely too, too hot for me to put my hand on here. I mean, remember, we have carrots in here, we have onion, we have celery, we have all those tomatoes, um, <clears throat> two kinds of beans, hamburger, spaghetti sauce. It just smells wonderful. It's warm enough now, I think I'm gonna add the pasta. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. I didn't get it all the way up to a boil, and I think that's fine. It smells wonderful. So it calls for a uh, shell pasta, but I'm gonna use rigatoni. I've used these before. I like them, they're a little bit, huh, that was 20 minutes for my bean. Um, I do like to set alarms because you can get easily distracted and you don't want something to cook too much or too little. This is two pounds of pasta I'm putting in this very large pot. Um, I've, uh, I did increase it a little bit from the original recipe. I'm just scraping a little bit of the bean pot. And then I do just want to keep my eye on the pasta because I don't want it to uh, overcook. And then we'll take it off the heat. Even, it might even be a little al dente because I, I really don't want mushy pasta. Um, so we will come back. I am gonna taste the broth just to uh, make sure I don't need to add any salt because remember we didn't add any. So um, I don't think I ever have, but I wanna make sure it tastes good today. I did add two tablespoons of salt and now it's perfect. So you do wanna always taste your uh, broth. You don't need to taste the whole soup. The broth is what makes it and um, you'll be able to tell. The other thing is, the parsley does look like flecks of something really dark. So just make sure you um, you are stirring, but I'm like, what? And then I, it was parsley. So um, you don't wanna ruin your whole soup pot because something stuck to the bottom of your pan. So look at this. So there's the beans and the hamburger and the tomatoes, pasta. It's gonna be beautiful, hearty soup. So we will, I will test the pasta and then uh, we will start scooping it up. It smells amazing. The pasta is al dente, so it's not mush. 
um, let me get a fork. I'll show you what I did. So I can go through the pasta, but it's not mushy. I, I do like this rigatoni in it. I think it holds up, especially sometimes you have to make changes to a recipe when you're making more because it's going to take longer for this to cool down. Therefore, it is cooking some. I always have a few wet paper towels to wipe off the containers. I've already put labels Oh, it's going to be hard. Anyway, it says pasta fatoli soup, fully cooked, just reheat. And it says hamburger, tomatoes, pasta, kidney beans, cannelloni beans, onions, carrots, celery, and spices. I don't list that anymore. This has been one that I've made for a long time. Um, I pretty much know what food allergies or anything. I don't have anybody with food allergies, so that makes it easy. Um... Remember, you want to scoop from the bottom so that you get all of the goodness. And then you want to make sure you add about half of the ingredients and then half broth so that people can enjoy their soup. Now, the other thing is, These I know are not going to be frozen, so they're fine to be full. But if you're gonna freeze it, you want it with an inch of head space, meaning you're giving the soup room to expand. And you'll notice I, I reuse containers. Containers are really expensive. For the soup fundraiser, we did, we had by 500, but we were able to get them for 21 cents. Um, but I'm not gonna buy 500 for me. My mom bought, we just bought her 500, well she bought um, pans for mini bread loaves. Um, so, and she probably does a thousand a year, she thinks of little um, quick breads. Okay. So again, remember, Scrape off the bottom so you're going to get some of those beans, some of the hamburgers, some of the pasta, the carrots, the celery, the onions, you want, and the tomatoes. And then you want some just broth. I have different size containers depending on, this is for a couple. I mean, look at that. It's beautiful. I mean, they can get a different item in every, every bite. It's just beautiful. And then just some broth. And again, this one isn't going to be frozen, so I can go ahead and take it close to the top. I don't, I don't want to get so that we can't. Um, we can't close it, or we slop, or or whatever. Then what I do is I take these out to the garage. I have. Produce boxes is what they are, inverted, so upside down, on my chest freezer, and I let them cool for a few hours. Then I'll cover them after they're cool so there's not condensation, and put them in the refrigerator, and then we'll deliver them tomorrow. I will have, hopefully, a few for the freezer so that if we need to bring somebody some soup, we will have it. So let me get the rest of these all divided out and I'll let you know how many servings of soup we got from this one recipe. So here I am out in the garage where the soup is cooling. 
32 servings of soup. I have two of these. I count them as doubles, but that really will provide a couple with probably three to four, probably three meals. This one is for Ray and Donna who helped me so much for their freezer. And the other one is for them to eat this week. This is one of their favorites, if not the favorite soup that I make. So I always make sure that I have extra. She, Donna, peels potatoes for me. She helps Anthony in the garden. She shreds cabbage for me. I mean, anything I need, she will help me with. And so I like to thank them with their favorites. Um, so this one here is Anthony's. I don't have any pasta in it, but he has all the other good things. These are, as you can tell, there's an over an inch of headspace. Though this tray and these two are for the freezer. The rest, these two trays will be delivered tomorrow. So we're gonna let them cool. They're still very, very warm. It smells amazing out here. I want to thank you for stopping by the Unconventional Homestead. I'm Jenny, and until next time, make sure you're preserving your food.